you do not own a private key. Now, why, why is that? Well, in the real world, a real key would be a physical object that you actually own because it's a piece of metal, let's say, that you own. Uh, but th the purpose of the key, the reason it's valuable to you is it allows you to you know, unlock a door or a safe or something like that. Um, and in, in Bitcoin, we call it a key uh, like as a metaphor or an analogy because it similarly lets you use this network in a certain way. But it's not physically a key. It's just, it's just a string of data. It's just a number that you only you know. Um, and so the critique of intellectual property um, is basically based upon the recognition that you can't own information. And the reason you can't own information is, is not only because it's not a scarce thing, but because information is not an independently existing thing. Information is just – and knowledge – well, say information is always the in-patterning of an underlying thing because information can't exist in the world without a carrier or a medium or a substrate. So. Um, a, a novel is just the uh, is the way that ink is in, is in patterned on the pages of a book. Let's say, um, if the book disappeared and the ink disappeared, the, the 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 novel couldn't exist anywhere unless it's stored in a memory somewhere, someone's mind or somewhere. So the thing is that those underlying media or carriers are always physical things that have an owner, and so information is just the the feature of an owned thing is the it's sort of like if you have a red car, the redness is is one aspect or characteristic of that car that you own, but you don't own redness. You happen to own a car that happens to be red. And likewise, if you own a piece of paper which has which is impatterned in a certain way, you own a book that has a certain configuration, but you don't own its configuration separately. That's just a feature or characteristic of the thing. Or if you own a machine shaped, which is just materials shaped in a certain way, you own those resources, those materials, but you don't own the way in which they're shaped, which would be the invention, right, as abstracted. So that's why you can't own knowledge or information. And if you did own it, you really can't own it because force – ownership is an enforceable right, and force is a physical thing that's applied against physical things. So ownership can only be applied against physical things. So when the law decrees ownership of an informational pattern, it's really not the information that you own. It's just a disguised way of transferring ownership to physical things, like in the examples I gave earlier about the printing press and the factory. That's why, that's why really a patent is not an ownership of an invention. It's really an ownership of someone else's factory based upon the excuse of ownership of an invention. It's sort of like the religion idea. People say we fight over religion, but that's really uh, just a shorthand explanation of 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 a physical fight over physical things. And religion is the reason why we fight, like the motivation to fight. But you don't, you can't really fight over religion because religion is not a physical thing that people can own. But when people disagree over religion, they use that as an excuse or as a motivation or as a fake justification for harming other people's land and cows and women and bodies, right? So really it's still a fight over ownable things like people's bodies and their land. This is religion's the reason, right? So likewise the 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 nominal legal classification that you own an idea is not really true. It's just it's it's it's, it's the excuse that the law gives to let you own someone else's factory or something like that. So because you can't own information and because a key in Bitcoin is just knowledge that you have, which allows you to participate in this in this distributed game in a sense. right? It's a game with certain rules that everyone is playing by. They're all participating in this network, which runs according to these distributed rules, right? which are distributed in the sense that they're, they're rules that are embodied in the code running on thousands of independently – of independent servers, which are all compatible enough to, to network together. So your key is the key that will let you plug into that network and cause Bitcoin to be moved from one location to the other. But that, again, is just a metaphor. Bitcoins don't really exist as a physical thing. That's just how we describe the operation of this network, like the, the, the rearranging of these electrons that change the digital configuration of entries in this large spreadsheet called the blockchain.